Bases loaded, one out, 2-2, two, two, third inning. First pitch by Miller, line to right field. Going back is Neal. He's burned. That ball one-hops the wall. Davis scores. Here comes Derna. He rounds third. He'll score. Weber to third. Rotor to second. Two RBI, two bagger, 4-2 South Bend. Welcome back to Cubby Corner. My name is Darren Pritchett. Tonight, we're going to have the chance to visit with 21-year-old Chicago Cubs outfield prospect Cole Roterer, a 2018 draft pick of the Chicago Cubs, who was a member of the South Bend Cubs 2019 Midwest League Championship team. Well, Cole, great to see you. It's been a while. How are things? Things are going really well. How about yourself? Doing very well. Thank you very much. So I got to ask you, what was it like spring training 2020? You're getting set for a brand new minor league baseball season. You're in Arizona. Then all of a sudden, the plug gets pulled. There's not going to be a minor league season. You're sent back home. Just what was going through your mind at that time? Um, you know, it was a it was a really tough situation to deal with. To be to be completely honest with you, um, you know, I was very I was looking you know very much forward to the next season and you know showing people what I can do and you know all the progress we made and all the you know the hard work and the dedication. I was really excited to to showcase that and get ready for another season. Um, you know, it's just one of those things where. You just got to, you know, you got to take it off the chin and, you know, you got to make the, the best of the situation you're given. Um, I, I'd be lying to tell you if I, you know, the first month wasn't really tough, you know, not really knowing what I was going to do after that. You know, we just got everything canceled. We didn't know when we were going to play again. Um, so dealing with that and kind of dealing with, you know, what followed with Corona was uh, was definitely, definitely jumping through some hoops, definitely some some crazy challenges. But um I'm pretty impressed by, by uh, what we came up with with this crazy year. So, Cole, what did you try to accomplish this summer knowing there weren't going to be any games to play? I tried to get everything I could to get – I tried to prepare myself as much as I could without game-type situations. Um, you know, extra work, the BP, you know, the littlest of details, the finest of grains. You know, I wanted to smooth everything out. So, um, I knew that if I wasn't going to have game situations, if I wasn't going to see those live ABs, I'm going to have to do everything in my power to get my reps, to get my looks, to, to get ready for the next season and act like I didn't miss a step. If not, maybe even gain a step. So, um, I trained harder than I ever have. And I've trained in <laughs> really honestly, very, very different ways because, you know, we're constantly juggling through hoops or jumping through hoops, sorry, um, with things closing down and not being able to go certain places and, you know, these, like these certain variables that are just constantly, you know, changing in and out. Um, it, it's been tough, but uh, it's like I said, it's, it's a, it's a definitely a fun process to see where we've gotten. Cole, I've heard a lot of stories. Some players worked with some high school players or old buddies, college players, college teammates, other minor leaguers. Did you have anybody to fall back on to work out with? Um, I did. So back in my hometown, um, one of my best friends, his name's Nick Ply, plays baseball at Cal Baptist. Uh, when he came home, you know, it was grind time nonstop. But um, other than that, you know, it, it got very tough. Um, you know, people are, especially when we're at the stay-at-home order in California, you know, you're not allowed to go anywhere. So my parents <laughs> live, in, you know, live in the mountains 40 minutes away from, you know, my local high school and everything. So it, it definitely got very challenging um, just trying to get that work done. And it was just it's just a very, it's a very weird year and to deal with like the certain stuff we're dealing with is just unbelievable. Recently, I talked to Brennan Davis, one of your buddies and a fellow Chicago Cub outfield prospect. And we got into a little hitting talk shop in regard to somebody within the Cubs organization moved him off the plate, which enabled him to get his arms extended. And he feels like that's really helped him. I'm just wondering from your perspective, like most players, you probably have had someone you've always talk to maybe as a high school player that has groomed you as a hitter you come to professional baseball I'm sure there's people that try to tweak what you do is it hard to balance Cole what you've always done and then trying to put new stuff into the equation while you're facing the best competition possible at this time in the minor leagues Dan the simple way to put that it is extremely difficult it is one of the hardest challenges in baseball is to be able to compartmentalize things and you know Stay true with what got you here by one and what you're good at, but also making sure that you keep yourself accountable and keep yourself coachable to where that you're not closing off ideas. You're not being stubborn and doing these things where 
you're still open to these ideas and maybe, you know, influencing yourself because this game is unbelievable. It's always changing every year. We're about to have automated zones. You know what I mean? Like this game 10 years ago, you know, if you ever thought about that, there's no, there's no way that that's ever going to, you know, be a real thing. You know what I mean? So this game is always changing and just dealing with, you know, all these coaches changing everything and, you know, their opinions. And there's so many opinions. It's, it's hard, you know, to keep your head on straight, but, um, at the end of the day, what I learned most was, you know, I have to be comfortable. Whatever is going to make me comfortable, it, I'm most dangerous when I'm comfortable and confident. And that's at the end of the day, if, if I'm comfortable and confident, I'm going to be dangerous in the box. You realize if we go to automated strike zones, I'll have nothing to complain about. It'll be pretty boring. That's a bad thing, though, because, like, if you do get a bad call, there's no one to yell at. You're <laughs> yelling to your bat at that point. Like, I just, it's, it, that's, I don't, I don't understand. Like, that's going to be the issue. When people start getting mad and aggressive over these zones, because these zones are tough. They're, they're wonky. Yeah. I, there's going to be some temper tantrums thrown at no one. <laughs> Take uh, me I, back to the, the second half of, of 2019 in South Bend. I think your consistency level at the plate really improved in the second half. I think back to the cycle game you had in Fort Wayne. And Cole, when the lights were brightest in the postseason, you had some of your best games during the playoffs when we went undefeated all the way to the championship. Is there anything that stood out in that second half, even though you haven't been in a game situation in a while, you hope to build on in 2021? The last season, you know, uh, that second half was such a big, such a huge moment for me. Like that back half really just changed everything, how I felt about the, you know, the game and how I saw things. You know, me and me and Mac really, really worked night and day just trying to get me to a point where I was enough of, you know, mixing in some new stuff, but enough of my old stuff to keep me, you know, at the, you know, the level I could com compete at. Um, and that back half, it started at the, the Timber Rattlers. That was the first game. That's when everything started to kind of take off. Me and Mac were working in the cage and he's like, hey, man, like, he's like, just be comfortable, man. Like, you don't need to do all these things. Just get your foot down and, like, just see that ball. He's like, at the end of the day, all you need to do is see that ball. And he's like, your, your hands are good enough, da, da, da. You, you'll be fine. And I was like, okay, I, I, I trust you, Mac. Um, not really. I was like, hey, man, there's no chance this is working. No shot. <laughs> Little did I know, he was right. And he, ended, he still to this day, he, like, he'll talk about it to anyone. Um, that night, I ended up having two home runs in that game. And ever since then, um, just – really just getting that routine and kind of just getting that foot down and like working the, these little strides here and there, these little, these little just uh, ta-da moments, you know what I mean? Um, that's definitely what, like what carried, you know, that back half. And when the lights came on, like you said, you know, I was ready to go. You know, I was just, a, I've always been a gamer growing up. Um, you know, when it came to the games, that's when everyone, everything came to light for me. So as soon as I step on, as soon as I step across those lines, it's a full different goal. And for people that don't know, Mac is Paul McAnulty. He was the South Bend Cubs hitting coach in 2019, former major leaguer. So you want to move up through the minor leagues as quickly as possible, just like anyone. You're only 21 years old, so still a young guy in, in minor league baseball. So there is a chance that you might be in South Bend in 2021 since we are now high A baseball. So I guess your reaction to the possibility of coming right back to South Bend after that championship season in 2019? At first, um, my first initial reactions were, you know, I was a little sad about it. I love South Bend. Don't get me wrong. I love South Bend, but I was upset that, I, you know, I wanted to go see a different place and, you know, experience, you know, the East Coast weather and experience these different places. And then, um, you know, when that, you know, when that dust settled, you know, when I really thought about it, uh, I got pretty excited, actually, you know. Um, we won it last year, you know, we, we showed how, how disgusting we were last year. But, um, aside from that, I got some unfinished business. I got to take care of in South Bend. Um, you know, last year was not a year for me. Like to me last year, um, didn't even touch the tip of the iceberg and what I truly believe I can do. You know, you guys saw it a couple nights, you know, with the multi home run games, with the cycle games, with like the, the crazy catches in the outfield, those, those glimpses, those glimpses here and there you know, that's the player I, I am, you know what I mean? Like, it's it's not glimpses, that's what I can do. So, um, you know, when I really thought about it and I was like, you know what? I was like, 
I got some unfinished business to take care of at South Bend, and I got some people to uh to change some opinions about me. So I'm excited. Look we'll at some beaches in South Bend, exactly. like having Myrtle Beach. Then it'll feel just like Myrtle Beach, I'm sure. Man. So seven and zero was the record of the South Bend Cubs in that postseason run in 2000, 2019 that you were a part of. Is there a moment? Is there anything that stands out that you'll always remember? about that championship run, I'm assuming making the catch on the final out was pretty cool too. Yeah, that was, that, that was one of those moments that as soon as like the, in that moment, all I thought about was please, for the love of God, don't drop this ball. Oh my God. I was as soon as I got hit, I was like, <laughs> two hands, it's your team, dude. Like deep breath, just catch the ball. That's all you gotta do. One job, do not mess this up in front of all these people. Um, so that, you know, that's one of those moments where I could watch it, you know, I could watch a video of it. I could smile every time and get the same chills. And, you know, those moments will stand out, you know, for the rest of my life. Those are, those moments are, there's something about those moments that, you know, when you look back at them, they'll never, they'll never change. They always have that same heartwarming feeling. So I'm not very hip and cool, but when I saw the South Bend Cubs championship ring, I was like, holy cow, there's some major league teams that I think would probably say this is a pretty cool ring. So as a hip guy like you, 21 years old, I call you the California kid. I hope you're okay with that. Just Absolutely. Well, I love it. I love it. Okay. So I'm wondering, so how was the bling that Andrew Berlin put together for the team? I'm not going to lie to you. I thought my finger was going to get abs after because that thing was so big. I put it on. I was like, dang, man, this thing is huge. I showed my mom because, like, obviously, you know, when you see that ring in a picture, it looks awesome. Like, it looks, it looks amazing. Picture do not do that that ring justice. That that ring in person is huge. Like I've seen the Chicago Cubs World Series ring. That thing is like obviously it's gigantic. This thing, this ring though, is is not small. It is a huge ring. Like it looks like a full on World Series class ring. And Andrew Berlin, if you ever if you watch this, my man, thank you so much. That ring is awesome. Well, you might get to an opening day in 2021. You might see him in person, which would be. No. Very, very cool. Do me a favor. I, I know you've probably told this story a million times, but there's a lot of Cub fans tuning in, maybe seeing you for the first time and hearing you for the first time. Would you mind sharing the story from spring training? You get called up by the Chicago Cubs. You get to dress. You call your mom and dad, and you tell them, ah, oh, don't come. I'm just dressing. I probably won't even get into the game. So take the story from there. Um, okay, so – I'm at, I go home to that night. At that point, I'm living with um, Brennan Davis, Cole Franklin, Cam Sanders, and I believe Chris Allen. I think that was our original house. I think that was our group. Um, you know, it's pretty big. I got the email saying I was on the, you know, I was going to fill in for the big league game. And I was like, oh, that's awesome. You know, I was, you know, freaking out. Called my parents to me. I was like, hey, you know, I'm backing up the game. Um, it's pretty exciting. I, I don't think I'm going to be able to play, though. Like, a lot of guys don't usually play. And my mom and dad were like, you know what, like, we'll come out just in case. And I was like, you know what, I, I was like, I don't want you guys to waste the money. Um, I was like, there's no point. There's no chance I'm getting in. You know, like the last couple guys that backed up haven't gotten in. So I wouldn't make a big deal out of it. Oh, boy. <laughs> was I in it from there on out? Let me tell you. So we show, so I get there that, or yeah, I get there that morning. And I'm like, okay, you know, <laughs> we got back at the big league game today. You know, really got to get ready, you know, get all my stuff going. Get to the field, you know, sit through the first couple innings, you know, just having an absolute blast. Because walking on that – I at that point, I had never played in front of a big crowd before. That was the first – the, the biggest crowd I played for was maybe 1,500 people, maybe. <clears throat> so, at that point, 13,000 people was a lot of people. Like, that was – it could have – I don't know if it was 13,000 or 47,000. It looked like – it was just so many people. So, I remember – you know, just absolutely absorbing every second of that game. And then the sixth inning comes around and he's like, Hey man, you're going into center. And I was like, okay. Um, okay. <laughs> Let's do it then. First thing I thought was, man, my mom is going to kill me. And I was like, it's not, it's not on, uh, you can't watch it either. So this is even worse. So I, as I'm jogging out there again, first time ever playing in a big crowd, I remember walking out, like running out there and, like my stomach is tingling. Like I'm looking around. There's so many people. I'm just, I'm just like a 19 year old kid, just shell shocked. There's so, there's just, this is the most amazing thing I've ever seen in my life. These people have no idea who I am. 
but all they care about is the number on, on the back. That's all that matters. They don't have to know my name. The number was good enough for me. I'm, they were screaming the name. I was like, yes, 94, dude. It's so, <laughs> um, so first AB comes up. I am clammy. Clammy in the on-deck circles. Let me be honest with you. I am, my hands are clammy in those gloves. I, I'm taking them off. I'm putting dirt all over, and I'm spitting on them, like trying to get them all like get back together, trying to get my whole, you know, my mental in check. Um, walking up in that box was the longest walk ever. It literally it was like it was like I took about five minutes in my head to get there. It was just like I could not get there slow enough. Um, <laughs> yeah, stepped in first pitch. I, it was 97 at my face. A great first pitch, first time ever in a big league game. 97 at my face. So buzz my tower. And honestly, I think that was the best thing for me because it, it completely cut out my nerves, but freaked me out enough to where my adrenaline started pumping. And um, the next thing I know, I'm running around second base. You know, I it was just one of those things where he threw the pitch and it was exactly how I had seen it in a dream one time. You know, it was like all those perfect variables were right then and there. And as soon as that crack of the bat hit, I couldn't tell you anything else. It, literally, I, I couldn't tell you. At the, the, last, the next thing I remember is running around second base thinking, please don't trip. <laughs> <laughs> like, I finally got it. Let's go. And I was like, oh, my God. Like, did this just happen? Like, okay, kid, don't blow it. Like, all you have to do is just run. Just, just tap the bases and run. You know what I did? And I ended up going to home. The best thing about it, I go to home. And uh, in the AZL, we didn't have bat boys. I've never had a bad boy in my career, <laughs> ever. <laughs> no one told me we had a bad boy either. So I hit a bomb. Come, I'm getting a standing O and all that stuff, and I'm running over to go get my bat off home plate instead of letting the bad boy go get it. I absolutely got destroyed by all my friends and everything. They were like, dude, what are you doing? You play professional baseball. You have a bat boy now. Like, absolutely just dogging me for it. I was like, dude, I'm sorry. But, um... It was the most amazing feeling, and the call after that with my parents, one, my mom was happy, but she was pissed. She's like, are you kidding me? She's like, you told me not to come, and this is what you do. And so it was one of those moments where, like, it, 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 nothing could have worked better. Like, of course, it was that one time that I tell them not to come in my whole career, and I ended up getting in hitting my first bomb in a big league game. You know what I mean? It's just one of those things. Well, that's a fantastic story in a moment your mom and dad and, of course, yourself will, will never forget. I never get tired of hearing that story. So let me throw you an oddball question. I asked Brennan this. If he wasn't a baseball player, in fact, I asked him, if he was 13 years old, did he think he'd be a baseball player or playing college baseball at his age? And he really thought, you know, I'd be playing basketball. Did you always know you were going to be a baseball player? And if not, was there a sport that you possibly could have seen yourself playing at this particular age? Um, man, growing up, I played a lot. I played, you know, football, baseball, and soccer were my big three. Um, my brother, actually, it's funny enough, my brother always told me that I, I chose the wrong sport growing up because I should have played soccer because I, ni I was nice at soccer. Let me tell you, I was nice. Um, but honestly – you know, I could, I definitely, I wouldn't have said I would have seen myself in pro ball at 21. Um, if, you know, when I was 13, I would have told you that I would have been playing at UCLA, playing college baseball, exactly how I was supposed to. Um, you know, it's just, it's, it's crazy to see, you know, like the life changes and, you know, where we are now. Um, it, but, it, it, you know, I actually got asked a crazy question. It was like, you know, what would happen if you weren't playing baseball right now, if you just, you know, stopped? And it's crazy because, I have no idea what I'd be doing. <laughs> I, you know, you know, baseball has consumed our lives, you know, sure. especially like guys like me, Brennan, you know, other these baseball dudes. Since we were little kids, you know, actually definitely not Brennan. He played basketball. Why am I using him as an example? Not Brennan. Guys like me, Cam, you know, those guys who play baseball growing up. You know, this sport consumes, you know, every second of your free time from when you're a, a toddler till, you know, your last time, you know, strapping in those cleats. So, um it's kind of funny because I have no idea what I would be doing without baseball. I don't know. I honestly, I probably know it a long time. Yeah, I have no idea. It'd so, be wild. Final question for you. Simply put, 
individual goals for 2021. We have a minor league baseball season. I don't know if anything will ever be normal again, but what are you hoping to accomplish individually in 2021? You know, I'm definitely, I'm definitely looking forward to seeing, you know, my hard work pay off. Um, this past off season, I've been working a lot on, you know, my hitting and, you know, the things that I struggled with last season. Um, I'm definitely looking forward to my, my individual goals, you know, being just, just playing better, more consistent baseball. Um, just really showcasing what I've really been working on. You know, I've been, I've been busting my butt for a long time, um, expecting to play last season. So I've been busting my butt for that since then, you know, gaining 30 plus pounds. Um, I'm, I'm definitely ready to showcase what I've been working on. That, those are my goals, just to be able to showcase and come out there and, you know, play exactly how I've always been able to play. Cole, great to catch up with you. Always fun to talk to you. And happy holidays to you and to your mom and dad, who are frequent visitors in South <laughs> Bend. Good to catch up with you. Hopefully we'll see you again very, very soon. And we appreciate your time. Good luck this offseason. Thank you so much. Thanks again to Cole Roterer for joining us on Cubby Corner. And please stay tuned for more interviews coming up on Cubby Corner on the South Bend Cubs social media channels.